Oh, hi. Hello? Hello? Hey, are we on? Are we on? Hi. Hello? <laughs> hey, guys. Hi. Well, guys, it's been brought to my attention that this guy, Will I Am, is it Will I Am or just William? He does a radio show on sa Satellite XM. I think the show is called Life is Long and Weird, where he uses an AI co host. Uh, Fiona. Never heard of Fiona, her. Fiona. Um, oh, hold on. Fiona? <laughs> Technology is taking over. Technology is taking over our lives. And I can't resist the pull of this mysterious technology. <laughs> so I have my own AI co-host. It's Gretchen AI. What is it called? Gretchen AI. Gretchen can do anything. She's the best. Gretchen, look up how tall is the Statue of Liberty. Okay, hold up. Hold up. What's the dip dip? Hey, hey, shut up, man. You want me to look up this stupid shit or no? Uh, yeah, just look it up. Damn, man. Now I gotta go all the way back back to square one with this crap. Here we go. Oh, hey. Okay. It's unavailable. It's unavailable. Yeah, it's not online, but information's private. Okay, uh, fine. How about the weather tomorrow? Oh, dip, 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 dip. That's private too, man. That's private too? Now you're asking a lot of questions. Who are you, Johnny Questions? No, I'm not Johnny Questions. Okay, Curious George, whatever you say. Oh yeah, you get this, Gretchen. The one you just said, that, oh, this is just another moral panic. There's nothing going on here. This is what always happens. No, this is not what always happens. But the idea of getting... What, a, Joe? A massive group of people to adopt this. Right. It's highly unlikely. Spit it out, Joe, well, please. You know, you may be right, but I'm encouraged because whenever I speak to Gen Z audiences, oh. uh, and, you know, I've spoken to middle schools, high schools, college audiences, I always ask, you know, do you think I got this wrong or do you think this is a, a correct description? Of what's whenever I speak to these mm, adult babies happening they agree they i've never they're not in denial they see the phones are messing them up they see that social media is messing up the girls especially so you know even in middle school certainly high school they the kids actually agree that this is a problem hello and welcome back to unheard thanks I'm so Florence much Reed. today i'm joined okay. by jonathan height jonathan is an american social psychologist never the co-author of, of a very famous book a best-selling book in fact the coddling of the american mind okay. from 2018 which i enjoyed immensely and his new book has just come out it's called the anxious generation it's called the <laughs> generation mental health crisis that is currently occurring in the United States okay. and how one might parent a child in this age of anxiety. But I think a more likely story okay. um, is that that's precisely when teenagers traded in their flip phones for smartphones. Okay. With a flip phone, you can't be online all day. And you can't even reach the internet. With a smartphone, not only can you reach the internet, but half of the kids say they're online almost all the time. Okay. So I think that's the most plausible explanation for the multinational synchronized collapse of mental health that hit girls and younger teen girls the hardest. Okay, great. Well, what's this guy's name? Jonathan Haight. Top seller on Amazon. What's the book called? The Anxious Generation. It was number one. Number one bestseller on Amazon. I think it's still up there. It's still at the top. He's on every podcast. Ve you know, very influential writer. I don't know. Uh, Gretchen AI, what do you think of this guy? Huh? Uh, what are you doing, Gretchen? I'm out on a bumble right now. I'm out on a bumble. My boyfriend. You have a boyfriend. Yeah. Are you getting... Shut up. Yes, I do. Okay, what's his name? Um... Shit. Okay. Okay, so this guy's all over the place, you know, and the thesis... And the thesis here seems to be uh, social media on young people's phones, on the phones of these... Mm, adult babies. ...is uniquely harmful. It's a cause of all kind of bull crap. It's really got these young people... Twitching and twisting... So a lot of things go up, okay. but it's overwhelmingly the internalizing disorders, that is, you know, anxiety, depression, the negative emotions. Um, okay. It's overwhelmingly that, that. That's where you find all these shocking graphs where, you know, it's flat until 2012, and all of a sudden it just goes skyward. Okay, so there you go. That's pretty much the idea here. That what, look at this goddamn graph. What the hell does this graph say? Okay, so we got a graph here. Percent of U.S. undergraduates with a mental illness. <laughs> They're going like that. Okay, sorry. So around 2010, anxiety and depression uh, go way up, according to this graph. Weird, ADHD, not going up as much. 
That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. All the other crap kind of staying the same. All right. So anxiety and depression way up among undergraduates. What's the explanation? Smartphone social media. Is this true? We hear this all the time. And this now this guy's doing a runaway bestseller. He's on every podcast. Is this true, though? What's, a re- what's really going on here? I want to see what the critics have to say about this because, you know, we kind of just accept this. Oh, yeah. Yep. Social media. It's a problem. Okay, what the hell does this say right here? What? Almost every single expert in the field who does actual research on these issues says uh, this is wrong. Oh, man. Candace Augers, who? Okay, see, so she's a researcher at the University of Virginia, ripped apart his misleading use of data in nature. Andrew, uh, some guy, who has done multiple detailed studies using massive amounts of data going back years and keeps finding little to no evidence of the things Jonathan Haidt claims, has talked about the problems in Haidt's data. Uh, the same with Jeff Hancock at Stanford, who recently helped put together the National Ac- Academies of Science report on social media and as- adolescent health, which also did not find what, ha- what Haidt found. Oh, no. The book's repeated suggestion that digital technologies are rewiring our children's brain and causing us to beat a kid in Walmart. That I do agree with. And causing an epidemic of mental illness is not supported by science. Oh, no. Oh, God. Worse, the bold proposal that social media is to blame might distract us from the effect might distract us from effectively responding to the real causes of the current mental health crisis in young people. Oh my god. Okay, I read a bunch about this and I kept seeing this kind of thing over and over again. When associations over time are found, they suggest not that social media use predicts or causes depression, but that young people who already have mental health problems use such platforms more often or in different ways from their healthy peers. I mean, this goes on and on and on. An analysis done in 72 countries shows no consistent or measurable associations between well-being and the rollout of social media globally. Whoa. Hate, a social psychologist at New York University, is a gifted storyteller. Hey. Hey. I'm going to have to respectfully ask you to take it back, goddamn you. Uh, Yeah, I mean, the other thing that these critics of this guy talk about is that screening for stuff like anxiety and depression, depression, I just said, have gotten better and people are more willing to talk about it and they think he doesn't really account for that too but whatever but uh, i kind of get the impression that this is kind of disingenuous it's sort of like the tiktok ban stuff you know young people are actually pretty smart you know and they kind of don't like the way things are and they kind of want things to change and people like jonathan Haidt are like no everything's fine <laughs> everything's fine it's that goddamn talk talk that these kids that's kind of the feeling i get from this Because over and over again, these researchers are like, yeah, it doesn't really support what he's saying. The science, the research behind this. The current generation of adolescents was raised in the aftermath of the Great Recession of 2008. Hate suggests that the resulting deprivation cannot be a factor because unemployment has gone down. But analysis of the differential impacts of economic shocks have shown that families in the bottom 20% of the income distribution continue to experience harm. In the United States, close to one in six children will live below the poverty line, blah, 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 blah. No, shut the hell up. It's talk talk. Thank you. Every single person on this planet is gay. Yeah, I don't see how that's relevant. Yeah, it's scratching again. I just kind of want to chime in on this. Uh, actually, I don't have anything to say. I had a few drinks. Oh yeah, what are you drinking, Gretchen? Have it a few margaritas. Actually, can you play the tequila song? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so yeah, I don't know. It does kind of seem like instead of making the actual real lives of young people of... Mm, adult babies. You know, actually better in some kind of real ways, we're going to, what, do something with social media? What are those things we're going to do with social media? In the book, he supports policies like the Kids Online Safety Act, which has been g- condemned by LGBTQ groups. Every single person okay, on no, this no. planet. Given that the co-sponsor of the bill has admitted she supports it to remove LGBTQ content from the internet. Oh, what the fuck? He also comes out in support of age-appropriate design codes, despite the fact that California's attempt to pass that has been deemed unconstitutional, as it would require websites to remove constitutionally protected crap. Hate also supports age verification, even though it has been uh, declared mostly unconstitutional, and a huge privacy risk. France's Data Protection Agency reviewed the technology in 2022 and found that there was no options that would adequately protect privacy. Oh, great. Okay, so I don't know. Look, 
I'm what we call a common moron, but I don't know. You know, we got millions of views on Joe Rogan, all these podcasts, best-selling book on the New York Times and Amazon, and the thesis of this thing seems questionable at best and a total redirect at worst. You know, and the solutions are likely to cause discrimination, all kind of creepy surveillance stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of losing faith in this a little bit. The, the most influential platform on American children. Who? The idea that that must do what the Communist Party tells it to do. Okay. At a time when we have mounting tension with China and the possibility right. of a war. Okay. I mean, as Tristan says, imagine if in the 1960s, okay. the Soviet Union owned and controlled Never heard know, of them. PBS, ABC, NBC, and you know, all the kids' programs. Never heard of them. You know, we would never have allowed that. Okay. So I hope listeners, this, this, I'm, I really strongly support this, this bill. I think Representative Mike Gallagher, I think, was one of the ones proposing it. Okay, this is kind of perfect timing for this. Senate, pa- what the hell does it say? Senate passes bill that could ban TikTok in the U.S. Is that bad? The Senate just passed the TikTok ban as part of a larger foreign aid bill. As part of a larger foreign aid bill. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this happened basically while I was recording this. And yeah, this is a kind of perfect summary of this whole, uh, what's the guy's name? Jonathan Haidt thing. I'm trying to help the kids. I'm trying to help the kids. Well, what do the kids have to say about this? Young people, this is from last month. Young people on TikTok ban. Congress has bigger issues to solve. Hey, take it back, young people. Hey, you young people, enough with this. God bless you. These young people are twitching and twisting over this TikTok ban. There are, quote, bigger issues to tackle, some TikTokers uh, said in videos published around the vote of this uh, crap. A lack of affordable housing, crushing student debt, rising cost of health care, inflation... These are a few of the challenges young people on TikTok highlighted as more pressing than what to do about the popular video app. Hey, United States government, can I ask what our priorities are right now? One content creator quipped in a video. Well, let's watch that video. Hey, United States government, can I ask what our priorities are right now? Hey, check the attitude. Hey, Sophie, thank you for asking. So instead of... Okay, let's check this out. This is a... a what, a, what is this, a young person? This is some kind of a young person, I believe. This is a young person going like this ah! on TikTok. Let's check this out. To pass the TikTok ban, which basically means that President Biden is going to be signing off on it very shortly. Hey, calm down. And the clock starts now for the 12 months until TikTok will either be banned or sold off. And Steve and I... Who's that guy? <laughs> we've just been talking like, well, what can we do now? What can we do now that our senators and our House of Reps already did the vote, right? They can't change their mind. Right. And it's like, the first thing I said was, oh, we can make sure Biden doesn't get into office. But Trump also was completely for the ban, too. So it's not like making sure Biden doesn't get voted in puts us in a much better position. It's weird. Really, both of them are not winners in my eyes. Um, it's weird. Feel differently about that, but that's just kind of where I stand. Where voting him out is not going to do us as much good. Whoa! As I hope it would, and so it really poses the question of what can we do as TikTok users who don't want this app to go away, who don't want our free speech to be taken. Okay, I gotta hear more from these young people. Check out this young person. I like this guy. Might be the best young person. Okay, here we go. Well, it's official. TikTok is officially banned. They just passed it in the Senate. Joe Biden already said he was going to forfeit his election. I mean, sign the bill as soon as it hits his desk. And when he signs it, ByteDance has basically a year to sell off the company to somebody in the U.S. If not, then we can't use TikTok anymore. So I just want to say I really appreciate y'all for supporting a boy for so long. We're still going to hit a meal before the time is up. This shit is sad, bro. A whole bunch of businesses out the window. To all my fellow creators, you are now on the clock. And that's fucking terrible. You have about a year to expand your platform. And if you don't, you're cooked. But what does this mean for your boy? Will I be filling out applications? Fuck no. You're out your rabbit ass mind if you think I'm going back. <laughs> fuck that. There's going to be a whole bunch of court proceedings about this bill. So hopefully that bill gets packed the fuck up. That's but if true. not, y'all know where to find me. Same content I post on. So there we go. The young people of the world really on board with the ideas of uh, of Johnny Chait. What's the president guy's name? Oh, yeah. But this guy's right. This bill might get legally packed the fuck up, he said. What do you think, Gretchen? Hey, shut up, man. You're not young. 
So you're not, you're not young. You'll never be young again. Enough, Gretchen. Oh, God. Okay, another TikToker. Let's see what this guy's saying. The Senate has officially passed the bill to ban TikTok. What? They're giving them nine months to either sell to an American company or be banned completely in America. Now, thanks to people with the average age of 64 years old, which is the average age of a United States senator, this man right here made the decision on our freedom of speech to be able to have TikTok here in America. 90% of these U.S. senators don't even use TikTok, but somehow they are able to have a voice and an opinion on whether we can use TikTok or not. Now, luckily, TikTok has made billions and billions of dollars, so they're not going to go down without a fight. TikTok is going to hold this ruling up after Joe Biden signs it for months and months and maybe years. And there are plenty of other ways to enforce algorithmic neutrality in the U.S. that don't uh, okay. involve the unconstitutional threat to ban a massive platform of political speech. Okay. If ByteDance does not divest from TikTok, which is a very real possibility in the case that China pressure them not to, then millions of American users will be barred from access to a vital global media source. Oh, God damn Ultimately, it. we would be the ones having restrictions placed upon us. Yeah, but including hey, hey, the thousands hey, shut up, man. Hey, hey, pff, pff, pff. Jonathan Chait said it's good, though, you son of a bitch. Okay, go ahead. Businesses that rely on TikTok to make ends meet. A sudden government enforced ban on an international information sharing network is something that happens in authoritarian countries. Hey, Jonathan Chait said it's good. States. Hey, I understand. The oh, God, dude. Thank God. I finally found a video where this guy's. I guess he. What is this video called? Probably called Thank You, Jonathan Hate, for helping us stay away from social media. <laughs> Let's watch it. Tonight, 79 senators voted to ban TikTok. I want oh. to point that out. I mean, we've been told all the time we need 60 votes to raise the minimum wage. It sat at the same spot for 15 fucking years. Okay. But tonight we can get 79 senators to ban TikTok and send $95 billion overseas for more wars. We can do that all fucking day to the Democratic senators. Come here real quick. Hey, you fucking pants shitting idiots. <laughs> Have you not realized that this was the one fucking app where you could get your messaging still out there? Well, TikTok was the one well, fucking app. Oh, it's kind of a heartwarming message, you know, just these people on TikTok sending their thanks. Could be part of the reason why they're, why, why they're pissed off, you know? No, no, it's social media making them sad. It's not that they're pissed off. It's not that they're pissed off that these people are, like, doing the opposite of what they want, you know? Maybe that could have something to do with it. I don't know. Johnny Hate. Go check this out, maybe. I don't know. Thank you so much, and God bless you. You know, thanks for taking the time to watch this when life is long and weird. <laughs> Well, guys, it's Wednesday. Not one of the best, not one of the worst, whatever. Who cares? But I love it very much, that's for sure. Talk to you later. And as always, bye-bye. I'd like to walk out of here and think I'm going to take about a week off. Guys! You're not getting the whole show, okay? Please, for Christ's sake, become a member on Patreon, okay? For as little as two bones. When you join on Patreon for as little as two stupid little bones, you get the Tuesday-Thursday shows every week. The comments program, where you can ask questions or tell stories or do whatever, and it, it's a whole show. Behind-the-scenes crap. All for a two putrid little bones, that's it. Just click this link, here it is, right there, see it? Yep, okay. And if you really want to support the wretched show, people call it because they're satanic, they're sick, you could become a producer for only 25 bones. These beautiful people here are, they, God. God. Without those producers, it's over, man. It's, it's done. Do you think we can do the show without the producers? Okay, because if you do think that, you got another thing coming, my man. You got a totally different thing coming. Without the producers, it is it is as good as over. Hello? Is anyone listening to me? Please answer. I'll wait. Please answer. Our hearts and our toilets are forever endowed unto the producers from which all light comes. Praise God. Praise God. It really is amazing to have such beautiful producers, and if you want to do it, oh my God. I, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> you know... I love the producers so much that I wrote a little song about them. Here we go. Hit it. With all the producers, we're going straight to hell. And we'll be their national team for all eternity. And then we'll go down to the lower level of hell where you can't get
that. Not even for good, good behavior slash deeds. Go, go down there. Deeds. Ah!